What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. Okay, so Paige, you pro-woman. I, I got to hear what you got to say, y'all. I am pro-woman. Um, but in this situation, I'm, I, I don't think that she's going to win. I think it's good for entertainment and us women and Black women at that. But as far as you men, Black, whatever color, I don't think y'all are going to allow it. I don't think y'all are. And I think y'all are going to band together with your votes and vote against her. That's what I think. Would you vote for? Let me ask you a question. Would you vote for? Yeah. Why? I, I, I'm going to just be real honest with this. She's a black woman. Yeah. Yeah. They, they folk, not folk. to what somebody was saying. Where you don't do you not see the how that how that's a bad idea? Elaborate. Okay, so we're in three proxy wars three. with some of the most powerful leaders in the world. Yes, can you tell me why you'll be voting for Kamala? Because she black. Do you know what does she actually do? Be black. Are you voting red or blue? Black. Um, what's her favorite part of the year? Black History Month. This is another day, another beautiful day to let you know that there will be the first African-American female president. I'm voting for her. I registered to volunteer. I've donated. I am registering my friends to vote. Listen, y'all wanna see how strong black women are? We gonna show you. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about Kamala Harris. I'm gonna now uh, code switch. You know, let me talk to you about Kamala Harris because she is my girl. Mm-hmm, you know, these streets is talking and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm finna go vote for Kamala Harris right now. Sorry, I just want to make sure my black listeners know that they should vote for her. And apparently the only way they can understand why they should vote for her is if I speak any bonics. So again, I'm going to just keep that going. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Girl, whew, thank goodness we have upon us a b strong black candidate. Mm-hmm. No uh, slave yeah. ships for us or whatever. So here's the deal. You have uh, Kamala Harris and... Uh, she was throughout her entire political life a very proud Indian woman. And that makes sense because in case you didn't know this, Kamala Harris, despite being some percentage of black, her father is not fully black, her mother is fully Indian, she uh, grew up with just her mother because her parents divorced when she was either four or seven, when she was very young. You know, she wouldn't have quite a memory of her father. That's why she doesn't speak about her black father. So it is an absolute absurdity to, to suggest that Kamala Harris grew up in an environment where she was being impacted by black culture. I'll show you a couple of pictures of her, by the way, growing up. And there she is. This is her as an adult, obviously, with her mother. Um, and perhaps I'm guessing her sister, not entirely sure. Here is another photo of Kamala Harris with her mother. And her mother looks very Indian to me. Her mother looks like Princess Jasmine. Because that looks Princess Jasmine's hairstyle, right? Here she is. Uh, yep, traditional Indian upbringing that Kamala Harris had. And I want to be clear, Kamala Harris, like I said, loved being an Indian woman because it helped her when she was running for various positions. And when she became a senator, she got to applaud the fact that she was the first Indian American. She was so proud of her heritage um, as an Indian her entire life. I mean all right. <laughs> it's been a little minute, y'all. All right. And we, we got a lot to talk about. All right. A lot going on. Um, you know, Dr. Disrespect has made his return, but apparently now Mr. Beast, somebody on his staff has got something going on with some minors. Listen, it's a lot to get to and we're going to get to it all. But before I get started here, all right, let me say this before we get into today's topic. When I started this YouTube thing, people told me that, uh, I should stick to one subject matter. I was told not to divide my audience. I actually did research before starting on YouTube that, all led to them telling me that I couldn't talk about politics, money, and the black community all in one sitting. And to that I said, you goddamn watch me. 
And so for those that have unfollowed me because you thought that this was going to be a scammer hunting channel only, like, you know, CoffeeZilla or something like that, then to you I say thank you for coming, but my journey is bigger than limiting myself to just one topic or style here on this channel. I have way too many things to talk about right here and that I believe that affects and reflects our everyday lives. So we need to sit here and limit what I'm doing to only talking about scamming ass people like Yada Awakening and EYL. Now we gonna get back to them, trust me. Now don't get me wrong, okay? They still gonna get this work, okay? But I got bigger plans for this channel and my YouTube career. So for those of you who have followed me faithfully, I want to thank you for, sincerely thank you for blessing me with your time and patience because you all could be watching any other one of the hundreds to thousands of lying ass boring content creators here on this platform. But here you are watching a real one like me <laughs> about how to go in on the black Democrats. And for that, I say to you that I thank my community that is now over 3,000 strong is the foundation of great, great, great things to come. Now, that being said, I'm back and we got a lot to talk about. First things first, let's get into some politics, okay? Starting with you trifling ass and embarrassing ass niggas that irregardless of your accolades and the, the accomplished resumes, you still can't do anything but twerk when it comes time to talk about ideologies and what's good for your household and the black community. Megan the Stallion. You came to see me twerk. Was set to perform and her performance was as intellectually exhilarating as you would expect. <laughs> Y'all have spent every day since Kamala Harris announced she was replacing Joe Biden in this year's election. Y'all spend every day telling us about how Kamala Harris, okay, or Kamala, whatever, whatever, however you pronounce it, how she's overqualified for the presidential position in the White House and reaching into her background to tell us about what school she went to, who her daddy is, what she graduated with, and what board she's on and what she used to advocate for, right? Y'all pulled the Carfax report for everything that she's ever done for her to then take her ass to the scamming ass capital of the world, Atlanta. The same place that clown Yada Awakening operates out of. Same place where the streets and roadways are just as bad as the crime and scamming that goes on. She takes her ass to Atlanta to host a rally where she brings on Meg the Stallion, who's mostly known for being a stripper turn rapper up onto the stage. Not to share powerful words of enlightenment and factual data to support why you should vote for Kamala, but to clap her ashy ass cheeks live on national television. And you have people in the black community that hate Trump so much that they even advocated for and made excuses for it. I gotta be living I got to be living in an alternate universe built on parodies of life because this shit cannot be real. All them qualifications that y'all told us about. And yet when it came time to rally for her position and in the White House as the leader of the free world, she said, hey, I know what you low vibrational, incoherent, ignorant niggas want to see. I know what y'all really want to see. Y'all want to see cheeks clapping. Y'all want to see some twerking. This is what she thinks of us. And by proxy, what the Democratic Party thinks of y'all. In their eyes, we're just some dumb sacrificial pawns on a chessboard. Easily shuffled around and moved into the line of fire with no ounce of intellectual property in the fight to be exploited. Because at the end of the day, Black woman, president, good. Orange, white man, president, bad. What an entire shit show that we are witnessing right now 
before our very eyes. I have never seen such a horrible display of leadership candidates on both sides in my 40 years of living. I have no idea who I'm voting for in the presidential election. I got some more homework to do on that. But I can tell you that at my age and my position with the full family to support, I think about, I think more about, and I'm more concerned about these days, the local election than I am the presidential ones. Because for years, all of the adults around me told us to just vote Democratic. As if they were the saviors of the poor and middle class people. As if they were going to lift us up out of the ghetto and place us on mountains and pedestals of generational wealth. The truth is, here's the truth. Your parents and adults around you, they failed us. These fools had no idea what they was voting into office. No idea about what was happening right up under their very noses in their own community. Because they was too focused on making sure we scribbled in Democrat on the ballot. And then we sit up here afterwards and wonder why our kids are getting lapped and left in the dust of other cultures like the Japanese and why immigrants can come over here and get jobs that you can't even get yourself. And you was born and raised here. It's because the schooling system is outdated as hell. They still teaching our kids useless shit in these classes that they're never gonna apply in real life circumstances or situations because the curriculum ain't been updated to reflect modern society in 70 years. Listen, as I've gotten older, okay, these are the things I care more about. I care more about what's happening locally. I, have, I care more about the things that can affect me directly. As someone who used to not vote at all and say all the time that my vote don't count, I used to say that shit. It's amazing how your, your entire thought process can change and evolve with time and life experience. It's amazing to sit by and watch a community that is so lost wish death upon another man simply because they don't agree with his political view. That little dumbass boy who thought he was like the winter soldier from Marvel or some shit, he got up there on that rooftop, took a shot, and they said he was this close this close to completing the mission, but in reality, the shot was so bad that he ended up killing somebody else. And when it happened, I told one of my homies, I said, listen, I told somebody that uh, he's heavy in, the, uh, heavy in the politics. I said to him, listen, that that was the single greatest event that could have ever happened for the Trump administration. The aftermath of the missed shot, the incredible steel capture photo of Trump throwing his fist into the air with the blood running down the side of his face and the American flag in the background. It was as if, it was as if somebody had written this perfect script out just for made for TV. He couldn't have asked for a better situation to be in. And the numbers afterwards proved it because Biden was slipping at the polls, even, even more so than he was already after the debate where he had embarrassed himself and the entire Obama administration and every Democrat across the lands with his pitiful performance on the stand facing Trump. So then we have Kamala step up and take his place with all of her credentials, with all of her accomplishments, with all of her accolades. And because the Democrats don't believe that the majority of black voters are competent enough to win over with actual political agendas and talking points, she brings out the likes of Meg the Stallion to throw ass on the stage. And Cravo, a nigga that got bodied by a singing nigga not two months ago. <laughs> Yo, when I say that this is the raggediest election year in the history, I vehemently, uh, me, I, I mean it to my core. I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but I am here to tell you not to fall, not to fail your children, 
and their futures like our mamas and daddies and our granddaddies did us. Get involved with the local elections, y'all. Find out who is representing what and what laws they're looking to pass and change that directly affect your household. Stop voting Democrat on everything because your auntie told you Democrats equal good and Republicans equal bad. Democrats have run the city of Detroit for the last 60 years. And the people that were uneducated and poor then, guess what? They uneducated and poor now. Except now, they without pensions and retirement plans to fall back on in their old age. We got to stop acting like Democratic is the, is the default, the Democratic default choice that we've been beholden to over the last six decades has been the best thing for us. Am I telling y'all to vote for one party over the other? No, not at all. But playing this game of identity politics where we support somebody just because they look like us versus who's factually the better candidate for the job is the dumbest and most destructive shit that I think that we can do that has long lasting and lingering effects in the same community that you got to raise your badass kids in. I've listened to y'all do the same thing with black businesses and then wonder why every time you go back to patronize your cousins and show them some love because they black owned, that you also got to in turn deal with bad attitude Keisha working the register and nappy head ass Dre who always too high to get your order right and make sure that your burger ain't got onions and tomatoes on it like you asked them and catch up in the bag. We gotta stop. Do better. Wants better. Demand better. Y'all tap dance for, the, for that funky ass little $1,200 that Biden gave y'all after telling you you wasn't black if you ain't vote for him. Only to turn around two years later with the depth in this country at an all time high. Inflation and taxes through the goddamn roof. And that $1,200 that y'all went and bought crab boils and weed with has now turned into a national deficit in your community and bank accounts. And here y'all are still falling for the okie doke because the Democrats brought out a stripper on stage. What universe am I actually living in? Someone tell me. <laughs> Somebody tell me. Listen, my little rant is done. I'm done, okay? Rant over. Vote for who y'all want to vote for, but don't be upset when the policies and laws that you help put into place by voting, for, by voting just straight Democratic without understanding anything, don't be upset when these laws, those same laws, don't put you in the best possible position to flourish and all because you didn't have a clue what you was really voting for. Don't be upset. Be mad at yourself. I spent years, I spent years saying that my vote didn't matter. Young and ignorant. I spent years avoiding the local elections. I spent years ignoring who was getting placed and put in the office around me. I spent years watching people that had no idea who they were get elected in the office and make decisions for me that I decided to avoid and ignore by not casting my vote. Thank God for growth. I spent years voting straight Democratic because my aunties and my family and my parents told me that Democratic was the best way to go. Just vote, just fill in Democratic. Meanwhile, they had no idea that the same people they was putting in office is fucking up the city and running a rampage through it. City still ain't recovered from all the damage that Kwame Kilpatrick did to it during his reign of terror here in the city. The point is, if you're gonna vote for somebody, make sure they earned your vote. Not through the color of their skin, but the measure of their character and what they've done. I'll see y'all in the next video. Buckle down, fuck.
for the ride Run that by me one more time Before we slide Life is long, death is short No suicides Free your mind, pray to God Between you and I Buckle down For the ride Run that by me one more time Before we slide